Hi guys, this is me Osama Gaza. Welcome to my channel and in today's video we'll be talking about the lens distortion effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. Alright, so the lens distortion effect is actually one of the best and easiest effects you can apply in Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, the only thing I might need to tell you guys before starting it is that you need to plan your scenes and plan your whole editing before using that because it doesn't work in every single scene and I'm not gonna tell you like what scenes work better for this effect you can pretty much get a better idea from the example video in the beginning of this tutorial and decide whether or not this effect works on every single clip you might have alright so like any other effect in Adobe Premiere Pro you can just apply it by drag and drop it right onto the clip or just using the adjustment layers to save time and effort and if you guys want to know more about how to use adjustment layers I did explain that in my previous videos you can check that on my channel alright so I'm gonna be starting a new adjustment layer by clicking this new item button over here go to adjustment layer and of course keeping the same aspect ratios 1920 by 1080 24 frames per second and as you guys can see it goes by default here drag it and drop it on the center between the two clips all right the second step is by going to the effects panel, search for something called lens distortion. And it's all the way down here. And if you guys have like a newer version of Adobe Premiere Pro, you might have these um, different shapes of the lens distortion effects and cameras. So Adobe Premiere Pro added this default GoPro set to your effects panel if you want to um, imitate the GoPro warp effects. If you guys have GoPro or ever shot with a GoPro camera, uh, you may know what I'm talking about. So just go all the way down to the distort folder over here and you can find the lens distortion. We're gonna take that and drop it onto the adjustment layer we just created. And as you guys can see, we have the lens distortion effect in effects control panel over here. And these are just the type of warping we can use when applying the lens distortion effect and just for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna be showing you guys this first one the curvature warping or distortion type and the way it works is first go and drag the cursor to the middle point between the clips set a keyframe and this keyframe is gonna be the peak of our lens distortion effect so we just have to change the curvature value up to your taste and how you want it to look like just be careful because whenever you drag this value to the right it warps backwards okay so it doesn't really look nice even if you applied uh, the replicate effect so the way to use the lens distortion in this case is by drag this value to the left the negative value as you can see and I guess that would be enough all right, so this is the peak of our transition as we said then I'm gonna be kind of like six or seven keyframes before and after the middle keyframe and these new keyframes are going to be the start and end point of the whole transition so starting with the first keyframe or seven keyframes and you can just turn it back to zero by clicking this uh, reset button over here then go to the middle point again count seven more keyframes and turn it back to zero let's check that out yeah it's pretty nice okay so that's how you pretty much apply the lens distortion effect in Adobe Premiere Pro and of course if you want to tweak that up a little bit you can just highlight all your keyframes right click and choose Bezier or ease in and out depends on how many keyframes you're using and it looks better definitely looks smoother and you can even tweak that up a little bit by uh, having these keyframes fixed you can go to the adjustment layer right click go all the way down to show clip keyframes go to lens distortion and choose curvature then scroll down this v2 banner a little bit until you can see this curve right zoom in a little bit and what you can do is drag in these sliders until you have this little spike 
And what that means is that your transition is going to be faster at the start and the end points and like more visible at the middle point or the peak point. Okay, and of course, all you need to do is just practice a little bit with this curve because uh, the best way to learn how to uh, use it is by practicing a little bit. And as you guys can see, it did slip off a little bit, so I gotta fix that. Yeah, now it looks better. All right, so the final part of this tutorial today, guys, is um, letting you know one important thing about these other types of distortion. Uh, if we, for example, try to use the vertical distortion, we will have to create a middle keyframe at the center point between the clips. Do that. Go a little bit to the left. Try to create another keyframe, which is supposed to be the start keyframe of this transition. But see, guys, if you try to do this, you will have this edge in your clip. And of course, you're not going to have this in your final uh, video. So the way to fix that is before using the vertical distortion effect, uh, you have to use the replicate effect. And for those who don't know what the replicate effect means, I did explain what it means in details in my last zoom transition tutorial. So you can go there and watch this video and know more about it. And I even attach a free preset link that includes this replicate effect. You can download it for free. Uh, but you just need to understand how it works first. Um, and same thing will happen if you try to use the horizontal distortion. You can see that. So that's pretty much important to know before using these other types of distortion. You just have to use the replicate and mirror effects. Alright, so that's everything for today, guys. Thank you so much for uh, keeping up with me so far. And if you guys really enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos. And actually, for those who subscribe to my channel, I will be uploading a new video tomorrow. And it might sound a little bit weird because I'm always uploading two videos max uh, every week. But tomorrow I'll be uploading this quick cinematic editing. Uh, so you guys can get more interactive with me and tell me if there is any kind of effect you found interesting and want me to explain in details from my video. Alright, so stay tuned for that and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram to stay updated with my latest designs and videos. Thank you so much guys for watching and see you next time.